About a year ago I bought this laptop. This is an HP Spectre X360. I pre-ordered this laptop when it was announced and it's still the current generation of this device. I have been using this device as my only computer for about the last four months here in college. In this video I want to discuss how this laptop has held up during the last year of using it. I'll start with the bad news first. The screen on this device has developed a slight issue. On the left hand edge of the screen there are two small marks that consistently appear to be brighter than the rest of the screen. The hinges still have the same issue that I had when I unboxed this unit. They don't appear to be lined up straight. When I first unboxed this laptop, I figured that was normal because both of the hinges appeared to be the same. After the unboxing video was up for a while, somebody pointed out in the comments that according to HP, this isn't normal. I later realized that the bottom of the laptop and the screen of the laptop are not perfectly aligned. The screen appears to be shifted left just slightly. My guess is that the screen alignment issue has something to do with the hinges being misaligned. Hopefully this will actually show up on camera, but if you look at this, you can kind of see that the edge of this just isn't quite perfectly aligned with the lid. It's just, it's a tiny little gap, but it is there. It's even all the way down, so I'm not real sure what the deal with that is. And the other side has the opposite problem where the bottom of the laptop is inside underneath the screen, so it's kind of odd, but... That's just how this device is now. I noticed that after somebody in the comments of the last video pointed it out. So it is a problem with this unit. Uh, quality control by HP doesn't seem to be quite perfect, at least on these sort of pre-order early units. They weren't great. So hopefully they're better now. Can't really uh, speak for that though. Other than those couple of issues, this laptop has held up pretty well. The keyboard and the trackpad on this device are excellent. The keyboard does have a couple of quirks. The big one is that it has a row of extra keys on the right hand side, which makes your hands a little bit off center as you type. Something that you definitely get used to, but it is there. Another thing that I find odd about that keyboard is that the mute key has a bright orange indicator light on it, while everything else on that keyboard is white, including the indicator for the caps lock key. The battery life on this thing has been pretty good. I've been getting around eight hours with the uh, screen brightness around 50%. Though I have played around with undervolting this laptop a little bit and that seems to bump the battery life up to 10 hours or more. Plus you get quite a bit more performance out of it so I might make a separate video on doing undervolting with this laptop. But uh, anyway, battery life has held up real well. I haven't had any issues making it through the day so I'm quite happy with that. One thing that I have noticed about this laptop is that the fingerprint sensor doesn't work too well. The fingerprint sensor is along the right side edge of the laptop and it just seems like I can never get my finger in the right spot to get it to get a good read. No matter how many times I re-add my finger to, it just never seems to want to read it the first try. And it almost never works to unlock it anyway. So I switched to the Windows Hello camera and that works almost every time. I'm thinking the main issue is that the placement of this fingerprint sensor just makes it hard to get your finger on it in the right spot. but. I'm not real sure why it doesn't want to read, but it doesn't seem to work too well, so I've kind of quit using it. The finish on this laptop is held up fairly well. The gray seems to be pretty scratch resistant. I don't see any marks in the uh, sort of gray color. The shiny copper stuff around the outside has gotten a little bit scratched up, especially around the ports. Speaking of ports, let's go ahead and talk about the I.O. on this device. On the right hand side, you have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, a fingerprint sensor, and a volume rocker. On the left side of this device, you have a standard USB 3.0 Type A port, a headset jack, the power button, and a micro SD card slot. Another thing some people may be curious about with this device is coil wine. And I will say that there is a little bit of noticeable coil wine, especially when you have the keyboard backlight on or if you have USB devices plugged into this. I did mention that this was my only computer now, and I'll show you the setup that I used to kind of replace my home desktop setup. So anyway, I've taken the keyboard and mouse off my desktop at home. I've got a 24 inch 4K monitor here. This is an LG one. I was going to get a 1440p monitor, but as it turned out, the 4K one actually ended up being cheaper. So go figure. We've got the HP Spectre X360, obviously. Tucked in back there is an external GPU. And the system actually does run games fairly well. And more importantly, it runs Adobe Premiere fairly well. And then I've got a pair of Bluetooth headphones. These are Sennheiser HD 4.5s, I think. Now in my initial unboxing video, I mentioned that the pen may have limited use for me because I'm not an artist and I'm probably not going to take notes on my laptop, though this has been 
at least one use. I don't have a printer here, and of course it costs money for me to print things. So sometimes you get a practice test or a study guide or something like that. And what I'll do is just take that PDF of the study guide, open it into some kind of PDF viewer, and then just start drawing on the PDF with this pen instead of having it printed out or anything like that. That's actually worked out fairly well a couple times. Haven't used that feature very much, but it is nice to have. Same thing with the tablet mode. I'm usually using tablet mode if I'm gonna write on something like that. I'm just kind of using it like a piece of paper, I guess. So I will touch on the thermals of this device briefly. It does have two fans in it, and it is capable of keeping itself cool enough to run the 1.8 gigahertz base clock of that quad-core CPU that's in it. Now, as I've mentioned before, I've been I've done a little bit of undervolting on this CPU, and with the profiles that I have for that, I can actually get it to run around 2.4 gigahertz continuously, which is a decent performance upgrade over the 1.8. So, as I mentioned, I'll probably end up doing a video on how to undervolt one of these 8th gen CPUs. Though performance wise, I have been quite happy with this. I haven't had too much trouble editing videos or gaming or anything like that. This is the model with the Core i7 8550U, has 16 gigs of RAM as well as the one terabyte SSD option. Now one thing I will note about the fans is that they do get kind of loud and they sound a little bit like a small cordless vacuum cleaner. It's not completely annoying, but it's definitely audible. Though of course they usually won't kick in if you're doing something like word processing in class or something like that. So definitely not too bad. So overall, I've been quite happy with this laptop. The only thing that I really don't like is that little issue with the marks on the screen. So Anyway, hopefully that gives you an idea as to how well this laptop has held up over the last year, and maybe that will help your decision for Black Friday shopping, because that's coming up here pretty soon. So, anyway, that's it for now, guys. Bye.